Hey, welcome back to Bourbons of the Century so far. The 2000s have been kind to bourbon as so many beautiful releases have come out and we've gotten to enjoy a lot of them. I feel so privileged to have the honor to have been able to taste the majority of the limited editions that have come out and all the everyday stuff. I've been I've been drinking a lot of bourbon this century and I don't plan on letting up anytime soon. At number 24, we had one that I, you know, a lot of people thought it could be whiskey of the year, you know, when it came out. And it was the William LaRue Weller from 2018. I thought that was stellar. And you could make an argument that it could be higher up on the list. But here's a, here's a little hint for you. There are other Wellers coming up. But here we are to talk about number 23. And at 23, we've got... <laughs> Bourbons of the century so far. At 23, we have Willet, specifically the Family Reserve and Family Estate bottles. Now, let me tell you why these Willets are so special. You see, Willet was for a long time, they were a sourced whiskey company. They were acquiring stocks from other distilleries who were very happy to part ways with them. And in fact, you know, in a lot of ways, they in the 80s and 90s, they were helping out people like uh, Heaven Hill, uh, United Distillers, um, you know, Beam. Any you pick pick a distillery, and you had Evan Colesveen going out there and acquiring stocks from them when those people really needed the capital. Today we talk about the bourbon boom and what have you, but back then Evan Colesveen was kind of a godsend in the distilling business because he was going out getting really good stocks and making sure that good whiskey survived instead of being blended out into say Jim Beam White Label. So that for that reason, Willett acquired a ton of incredible barrels. And between 2006 and 2015, we started seeing people get private barrel picks through Willett. Now, I think that the best whiskey that was coming out of Willett at that time was actually rye whiskey and not necessarily bourbon. But the bourbons that they were releasing, the bourbons that they were putting out, that they were doing barrel picks with, it was coming from Stitzel Weller. It was coming from the best distillate in Kentucky at that time. It was absolutely delicious. Some of my favorite picks came from Jack Rose. I think Jack Rose, more than anybody, helped put the Willet brand back on the map. And you know, you know them for their rye picks, but they had some great bourbon picks as well. Coco Loco, uh, Scrump, Scrumpy Spice. Hey, those are two, you know, two favorites. And these barrel picks were coming in at 12, 8, 9, 14 years old. And they were just simply some of the best stuff that was out there. And you had to, uh, you had to be in the, in the know to, to get those barrels. And I got to tell you, Jack Rose, those, those bourbons are so amazing. And you can still get them today at Jack Rose. I would, I would highly recommend going to Jack Rose in Washington, D.C., and doing a flight of some of those old Willet barrel picks because they're on this list for a reason. That's going to do it for number 23. If you want to see more, click that subscribe button. Doing one a day. Until next time, cheers. Oh. Rewind selector. Rewind selector. Rewind selector. Rewind selector. Rewind selector. Rewind selector.